SPIE presents the Advancing the Laser series, honoring 50 years of laser achievements. I'm Peter Leibinger. I'm a um, managing partner of Trump uh, and in, within the Trump organization responsible for the laser business. Uh, Trump is a laser company, uh, industrial lasers uh, for manufacturing, as well as a machine tool company. And the origins of the laser business are really within the machine tool business. Trump makes, still today makes, um, machinery for fabricating sheet metal um, that encompasses uh, making holes into sheet metal, cutting sheet metal parts, um, and also uh, bending those parts. And the original process for doing this, for the, the making the holes and making cutting contours, was punching and nibbling, consecutive punching, it's what's called nibbling. Uh, and in, in the mid-70s, uh, when uh, the laser, uh, CO2 lasers become, became more powerful, it was shown that it is possible to do contour cutting in sheet metal with lasers. And of course, uh, that m was very interesting for Trump because at that time, Trump was considered the premier company in the world uh, for making nibbling machines, for contour cutting sheet metal with this consecutive punching method. And therefore, the laser was, if you will, a disruptive technology. So we had to look into um, this new tool. We were lucky in such that the laser cutting of sheet metal became the most important uh, industrial laser application. If you look at the numbers, if you consider volu dollar volume um, in the world market, it is a multi-billion dollar world market, which is very large for the industrial laser world. Uh, but um, so we decided we needed to develop those lasers ourselves, which we um, did in cooperation with German research institutions and in the early 80s uh, introduced our first laser CO2 laser systems. They were uh, RF excited fast, flow, fast axial flow systems, which was a novelty um, uh, at 1 and 1.5 kilowatt. And the original intention was to make those products for our internal market only. But we very quickly found out that at that time, uh, an industry-worthy laser was really not available worldwide, and that we had a unique tool that there was a market need for. We first expanded on the CO2 side by increasing power and uh, versatility of the CO2 lasers we offered, one kilowatt and above, um, and then added to this through an acquisition solid-state lasers, and basically did the same thing again, made a product industry worthy, combining our machine tool experience and knowledge with the laser physics that were in the public domain, if you will. Um, and so we built our solid state laser business, which at that time were pulsed lasers in the, from starting at 20 watts and then added to this in the 90s kilowatt CW system, solid state, which opened an entirely new market for us. Uh, and this situation stayed stable till the late 90s. And of course, at that is the time when the diode revolution started. Uh, it, was it was clear that at some point diode pumping would be possible, diode pumping of YAG and um, also uh, silica, uh, doped silica, and that diode direct at some point would also play a role in the manufacturing world. What really is taking place um, is a broadening of applications, broadening of tools available, um, power regimes, pulse regimes, etc. And, um, and uh, uh, the complexity of the laser business, both on the market side as well as on the technology side, has really multiplied. What we have to be excited about is um, the question if the, if the dominating player in the laser cutting of sheet metal, which is the, still the CO2 laser, if and how much of this will be replaced by solid state lasers, be it disc or fiber, um, there is a distinct chance that a portion of the CO2 laser cutting market will be um, taken over by solid state lasers. This goes into the core 
business of Trump, and therefore we are both excited and anxious about it. The second field that I'm personally very excited about is completely new applications that have become possible through ultra-short pulse lasers. And thereby I mean ultra-short pulse laser of higher average power of 20 watts and above. Um, it is absolutely fascinating to see that with these types of tools, you can do things that you cannot do otherwise. And that's always interesting for a technology company such as Trump, because tools of that type justify high R&D expenses. You can, you can spend a lot of money developing such a tool, even if you then later only make a few of them maybe 10, 20, or 100, because it brings such advantage to the customer that the customer is willing to, um, to pay the price, the high price that is connected to such a high R&D spending. And that, of course, drives technology. And that's why it's very, very exciting. So we feel that here, again, the laser will push the boundaries of what's possible in the manufacturing world.